Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike from SneakerHistory.com and I'm back with another video. Now today guys, Puma was nice enough to drop off a package to me and I'm really excited to show you guys what we have in store. It is the latest entry into their basketball collection and I must say, just, this might be my favorite basketball shoe of, of 2020. And I know I said that, you know, about the uh, Adidas PYW X 2.0, and that was a shoe we got to put some play in. I have to say, that was an amazing shoe. But this shoe just takes it to the next level. And nothing, not knocking that shoe, but this sneaker just takes it to a new level. And I mean, if Puma keeps putting things like this, you you won't be able to deny them. Like they're they're gonna you know be in the forefront of this basketball conversation soon because they're this is a thoughtful product. It is, for me at least, everything I'm looking for in a basketball shoe. And I'm by no means any professional player, but I can only assume that someone who's doing this every day of their life, I can't see why this would be a shoe they wouldn't like. Now, Puma's already brought us a few basketball models that have done really well. They had the, um, the Sky Dreamers here, which was released around All-Star Weekend before the world kind of went all crazy. This was a great shoe. This kind of more of that uh, legacy basketball sneaker, paying homage to the traditional, um, this, oh my gosh, I can't think of the name of it now, but the uh, just traditional basketball sneakers. And you're gonna have that leather material, the high top. Uh, again, just paying homage to that. Then of course, you're gonna have J. Cole's signature model, which is gonna be the RS Dreamer. Fantastic shoe. You saw a lot of NBA players in the bubble wearing during the playoffs. Uh, you see the sneaker fly for shells as soon as it gets released. So clearly you can't say anything bad about this sneaker. Great shoe. I haven't played it yet, but I am looking forward to getting this on court um, as soon as I can. But I will say this latest sneaker from Puma, I was actually able to get it on court. And again, it blew me away. And without further ado, the sneaker we're talking about is the Puma Clyde All Pro. Now this sneaker just released, I want to say last week from Puma, so it's available now on their website and I'll put the link down below so you guys can check it out. This shoe is fantastic both on and off the court. It's one of those things, people always want to be able to wear their sneakers, their basketball shoes off the court, they always complain that they're just too big and too bulky to wear, or, you know, just casually, but this handles both fantastically. Um, the sneaker itself is going to be comprised of Puma's new technology called the Matrix Evo, um, Evo Tech. So I'm kind of repeating myself. So Matrix Evo Tech is the knit upper that they use and is a very tight knit, but it's soft. But at the same time, it's very structured because there is a fuse. I don't know if you guys are able to see it out to get a close up, but there's a fuse backing to it. So it is still soft, has a fuse backing for strength, but at the same time, it's not rigid because a lot of times we put that fuse backing behind the knit, it loses that knit quality that, that you know, pretty much forms around your foot. But this steel really has that. And that is, they figured it out and it is done very well. Now you'll see there's different spots that have more knit patterns and more structure than others. So you have a little bit more structure out here to keep you contained when the lateral movement, you're gonna have some more uh, knit across the top, again, keeping you locked down. And you just have like, again, just more on the toe side. So any toe dragging looks like you get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more durability here. So you're not ripping through the fabric. And of course, you're gonna have some on going towards the ankle, going to, to, towards the heel. Again, putting more material there just to keep you locked down. And honestly, put it on a court for just a little while outdoors. Uh, I was really excited about it because it really gave me that feeling of wearing something similar to, let's say a Kobe 4 and Kobe 5. Uh, and those are two sneakers I love playing basketball in. And now I have an even more updated, not version of that shoe, but something similar to it with, you know, updated technology because it's not that, uh, I don't know, I guess that it is a man-made material on both of these, but with the, the Kobe, some of that, that vinyl-like material seemed like it wouldn't last as long. But this knit, this knit seems very, very durable. And I'm really, really interested to see how long I can, I can you know, get runs out of this one because this is super, um, it's a super good shoe. Now, another piece of uh, sneaker on the upper you'll see is gonna be the suede on the back, the heel, along with the green Puma logo stitched in. And that's probably gonna be the most, I guess, I don't wanna say, the, the most uh, quote unquote luxury material maybe. But the shoe is gonna be all like a textile upper but you're gonna have a little suede just to get a little bit of mm to it, but it's gonna go ahead and the heel is gonna 
um, in case a TPU you know, heel cup just keep locked in. Now the tongue's gonna be just a feel normal look at mesh tongue, but I really like it. It might be one of my most favorite parts of the sneaker because it's a decently short tongue, but it's very well padded. So a lot of basketball shoes have been going to like a thinner tongue and they, they kind of press into your ankles and I really haven't been a fan of that. But this one kept it very simple. You got the you know normal, just kind of open mesh tongue, Puma logo, but very, very cushioned, very soft. And it's probably one of my favorite parts of the sneaker. Now, one of the things about the sneaker that has kind of a little different for me because I just feel like they could have done something just a little, little different was gonna be the, the lacing system. Now, by no means is a shoe like come unlaced, but I have noticed that the, I get a close up for you as well, but where laces go through the upper, it is just like a bunch of threads, like that knit material. And it's, it's a little difficult to get laced up the first time in a sense of like pulling to get tighter. I just don't know if it's going to, I hope it doesn't, but I don't know if it's, how long it's gonna last because as you guys will see in the close-up pictures, it's a series, again, of, of knit and threads that are holding the strings in there as opposed to, you know, a traditional, like a hole, which I think I would rather just a hole or even some of the, some of the sneakers that kind of have almost like a ribbon where you're like, almost like an easy lace where you just pull it. So I'm really interested to see how long that lasts. Um, clearly they know something I don't know and what we know. They must, must have worked in the word testing out with Puma, so we'll, we'll give it a shot, man. You'll also have just normal, normal cushion inside the, uh, the sock liner, nothing special. You have Puma basketball in the, uh, in the insole, normal Achilles cushion for your ankle. Now, I will say I wish they would have done something. I know I keep referring back to Artist Dreamer, but I wish they would have done something like more of a sculpted Achilles cushion here. Not because the shoe hurts by any means, because it doesn't. But I felt like my ankle was kind of, or not my ankle, but my heel was kind of popping up a little bit when I was like moving, making just different movements. Now the shoe never like fell off or anything. It fits true to size. Like the length was perfect, width was perfect. Actually, like gives a nice hug to it. But I just kept feeling my ankle and my and my my heel just kind of go up and down a little bit. Not too much to where it's uncomfortable, but enough where I noticed it. Now, again, that's very minor because. I knew I never had a problem with the shoe like slipping or anything of that nature, but I just it's just a feeling that was there and it just was in the back of my mind when I was playing. As we move on to the shoe, or to the shoe's cushion, I should say, it's gonna be full length Pro Foam Plus. Now, the Pro Foam Plus is supposed to be a little softer than a normal Pro Foam, which you would see in the Ars Dreamer and then the Sky Dreamers and then the other models. Uh, so it's meant to be a little more, a little bit more give to it. And these are not caged in, so the Pro Foam is gonna be clearly available for you to touch it and feel it here. Now, the difference with this sneaker as opposed to the other Premier Basketball sneakers is going to be the drop-in P-Max cushion. And it's gonna be right in the heel. And it's not tr traditional in the sense of, I can take out the insole and there's a cushion in there, but they dropped it in, like, it's like they cored out the Pro Foam and dropped it into the heel here, which you can actually see uh, we'll get a close up of that as well. You can see the cushion here and it looks very similar to Boost. Um, and now I did some research on it and p is something I guess is typically used in a lot of running shoes. Now, in comparison to Boost, it is a bit softer, which I can definitely feel. Like when I when I put my heels down, I can feel a, a noticeably like softer um, like landing platform if I was to land like, straight on my heels from like a, a jump or any kind of movement, which is very nice. Now, my question is, how long does it last? Because doing some reading, it says that, you know, P-Bags, it typically lasts about 20% uh, of a shorter time than Boost does. Now, I don't know if that's exact math, but again, that's just me reading, trying to figure out more about P-Bags, because I've never heard of it until the sneaker release. Now, I will say that maybe it's something, that's the reason they put it in the heel, so it wouldn't be, you know, the life of it wouldn't be cut so short because of forefront movement because most of the time people play on their toes in basketball and when they land is you know they'll sometimes land on their heel and just want to give you a little extra cushioning protection for that for that impact so it would make sense if it's not being used often but i will say it feels really 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 nice on foot and i i'm definitely excited to keep playing in it to see you know i want to get some more competitive games in when that's socially acceptable and um 
yeah, just just really really nice idea. I, I never heard of it, and the fact that they're utilizing a basketball shoe as opposed to a running sneaker is very innovative. So I, I kudos to Puma for that, and I mean just overall, man, just the, the shoe itself is just really nice. Now we're gonna go down to the traction, which is gonna be a solid rubber traction, and it has you know kind of a a different traction pattern. You got your lines going, you know. Kind of opposite of each other, you have vertical and uh, horizontal lines that kind of in these little in these little squares, and they just kind of interchange by each in, in a pattern, and they seem to work very well. Uh, I played outdoors in these, and I don't see any fraying on the rubber. Now, again, I didn't play really hard; it's just kind of me shooting around, just running around on the court to see the feel for them. So I don't know how long they would actually last if you played competitively or really hard outdoors. I uh, didn't have any slippage problems. Didn't run into me having to like wipe off my wipe off my outsoles at any point, so that was nice. You're also gonna have this kind of like pivot point right here with the Puma branding in the middle and, and like the radio pattern here. You're gonna have your Puma logo in yellow. And then you have this really open pattern here where you can see that again that, that PBEX cushion, you can see that drop in there. Um, I'm not sure where the idea for this traction pattern came from. Again, I didn't slip in any way on my feel. I didn't have any problems there. It is really, uh, really unique and I wanna see, no, nope, that was all the lines, but yeah, this is uh, the closest I would say would be to the Sky Drummer, but it's still pretty different. I mean, Sky Drummer cushioning, Clyde All Pro cushioning, still very different, but a little similar, I guess. But regardless, again, it performed very well for me, kind of running around in them. I never had any problems of feeling like no uh, didn't feel secure, except for, again, a little bit of heel slippage. But overall, I, I am really excited for this shoe. I, I'm just, again, Puma, thank you so much for sending these my way. Uh, my goodness, this is probably one of the best performers I've seen in a very, very long time. And I say go ahead and get you a pair. They're really reasonably priced, especially when you think about basketball shoes. I mean, most you know, signature athlete shoes, most new basketball shoes, new tech are going to cost you you know, one, you know, 60 plus, almost $200 for like the, the highest end. But this is on that level of performing with those sneakers and the price, if I'm not mistaken, is 130 bucks. So again, I'll drop the link, link down below so you guys can check them out. There's a couple colorways now. This one is a white and black colorway. And they're actually uh, gonna be releasing an elf version here for the holidays, which is really cool. Uh, an elf as in the movie with Will Ferrell, so there's a collaboration in the works there. And you can actually see the coming soon on their website, which is really cool. Hope I can get my hands on those as well, but I don't know, man. I'm really excited for these. I'm gonna make sure I've covered everything for you. I mean, we got the upper, you know, the knit upper, that Matrix Evo Tech, the Keybacks drop-in. So yeah, guys, uh, I don't know, I really like it. You guys let me know down below, have you guys tried this sneaker yet? Is it on your radar? Um, do you like it, do you not like it? Let me know. I really want to hear you guys' comments below, I'd like to talk to you about it. But yeah, just please make sure you like, subscribe, notification button, and all that good stuff. But I just want to say I really appreciate you guys for, for sticking with the videos. Uh, make sure you're following my new set of videos, Sneakerhead on the Budget, because I really want to be able to show you guys some value, some different things I find as well. Um, but other than that, Puma, thank you so much again for dropping off the sneaker. Really appreciate you guys. If you guys want to see more of me and more of my sneaker history counterparts, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MadWatcher789. Then follow us on Instagram and Twitter for sneaker history at sneaker history or sneakerhistory.com. And of course, the Sneaker History Podcast, which releases every Monday and Thursday. So until next time, guys, see ya.